so today we're uh, in our second episode of um, In the Garage. Today my very special guest is Roddy Merritt. Uh, Roddy is one of my business partners in MPMC. Um, that stands for Merritt Productions and Motivated Consulting. Uh, we host car shows in the central Mississippi area. Um, our next show coming up is actually Hangar Hangover. And then we'll have South Life and Low Style Expo. Um, I have Roddy on today because uh, Roddy is no stranger to the car scene whatsoever in Mississippi and abroad. Um, he is also the owner of Minty Culture, and that's kind of one of the things that I want to talk to him about today. Um, the joint ventures between the two, and uh, just kind of how you got started into all this, man. So. Let's just start at the beginning. Just, you know, give me a little bit of rundown of, you know, kind of how you got into cars and yeah, go from there. Um, car stuff was just, uh, my dad was a big muscle car guy. He grew up in the, in the 60s and 70s, so uh, that was his thing, and it kind of got passed on to me and my brother. And uh, my brother's the one that actually kind of really got me into cars because he got into Japanese imports and um, that was his first car and he was like you should get one too and so we went down the whole tuner avenue of tuning right. cars and being from a small little town like Laurel, Mississippi we uh, started our own little car club there and had car meets and then all of a sudden the Fast and Furious movie came out and that was kind of it. it everything so you was guys set. happened before that movie? Yeah. Oh, okay, so, yeah. cool. We were, we were the guys that were old enough to say yeah we started that or, or that was us so when we went and saw the movie it was like our life on film kind of deal right. so it was cool um, I moved up here to the Jackson Mississippi area um, around 2008 and I was going to go to college and get a college degree and be a responsible adult and uh, try to leave the car world behind because I was trying to focus on school and um, it didn't take me long uh, after I graduated in 2013 that I started going to the local Cars and Coffee here, and um, that kind of that kind of set a lot of things in motion. So I uh, started a YouTube channel because I was selling cars at the time. So I started doing car reviews on the cars that I was selling, and that helped me sell cars. And um, that turned into an actual YouTube channel where people would invite me to drive their car to review it to film it and that's where the whole minty culture thing came from was i was looking for a way to have the channel but also have a brand where i could sell some stuff and try to make a you know some a little bit of extra money on the side um so long story short you just kind of get everything set up on social media and um, about that same time instagram was real new and whenever I got on Instagram, you know, that's a great platform just to share any kind of content. So I just started sharing pictures of other people's cars. And then one day I woke up and I had um, like 2,500 followers, wow. which was cool. Uh, one of my posts got like 1,600 likes. And then, um, you know, I started reaching out to different people like, you know, will you tag me in your post or share me, you know, share my stuff, tell other people about it made some stickers, gave those away for free, had window banners, gave those away for free, and I was just really trying to get the brand out there. And the next thing I know, I looked up and like two years later, um, with the help of a lot of other people, and a lot of people pushing it, helping me, um, I had I had several thousand followers. Wow. And then now to this day, I've got right at 22,000 followers on Instagram. Man, that's a feat in itself. It is, and it's 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 weird to think, you know, it started at zero and it grew that way. Um, but you know, that was six years ago that I started that account, and there's been times where I've kind of had to put Minty Culture on the back burner, and then I bring it back up, and then put it on the back burner. And so, 2021, it's kind of a goal is is um, I'm gonna actually this year I'll actually get to go to some shows as the brand, have stuff for sale that sort of thing and just continue to grow it into a into a, a company that you know means something to the car community and that can give back to the car community right 
Okay, so one of the questions that I have for you, you know, like you said, is the brand, like, you have apparel and stuff for sale? Yeah, um, I started it out as an e-commerce site, that, and that's kind of where you can actually go buy things, and um, I can do really anything. I can I can make custom anything. Um, so, for instance, if you wanted just a, a shirt with your truck on it, a picture of your truck on it or something like that, you have... You know, really, people spend a lot of money to go have a photo shoot, and then they have these pictures, and they don't really have anything to do. Well, I can put those on a T-shirt for you and sell you the T-shirt without any kind of setup fee or anything, because it's all online. Right. Okay. So uh, we see a lot of people in the scene right now, you know, kind of doing that sort of thing, and you know, not to take away or steal anything from anybody, but um, you know. How do you see your brand evolving, you know, kind of like where it was before to, like, what's the next big thing going to be, you know, and how do you see that kind of transition occurring? Yeah, so, I mean, I started it out as just being like a little side part of, of my YouTube channel, and the, the more I got invested in it, the more I realized there are, there's a lot of people out there that are just, that are just, they make a brand, they have a following, they sell to those people, they go to the shows as a vendor, and they just sell to those, you know, to the people that show up. And it's just it's just another retail apparel business. And what I what I always wanted, the minty culture thing, I wanted it to be a movement. And so that's kind of the that's where I want the brand to go. That's why I've decided to step up because I feel like I've defined it enough now and established it enough that I can. I can go out there and say, it's not just a brand, it's a movement, it's a lifestyle. Um, where the name came from, you know, we look at cars that, that we think are cool or we think they're clean, um, you know, the, the word fresh, you know, um, and mint, you know, this vehicle is like that, you know, we say that all the time. It's freaking mint. Yeah, it's, it's mint, it's fresh. <laughs> and right. so I, I kind of, that's kind of where it comes from is we all see something we like. And, and that's what the brand represents is in the car scene, it's cars that you like, cars that you think are cool, the things about the car, whether it's their stance, whether, you know, they're static or they're bagged or they're... I think another thing fit. in y'all's deal is called fitment. Yeah, fitment, yeah, yeah, yeah. fitment, yeah. And uh, so all of that, but what I want the brand to hopefully evolve into and grow into is the fact that it's a brand that is a lifestyle. And, and it's not just going to the show to make money. It's actually going to the show to support it. So if, right. if I go to Memphis to a car show, I can post, hey, I'm going to be here, need all my Minty Culture people, show up at this show, support this show, hang out. And that way that we can continue this community of car enthusiasts, that's what I really want. And that goes along with just about everything I do, but this brand specifically being kind of my, my nucleus of, this is the center of it where it, and everything else kind of get touches from there. Okay, well, two words in in your name, minty culture. So we we've kind of we've kind of delved on to the mini side of things, and I think this is a pretty good segue into what we kind of do, you know, together as a team is moving into the culture side of that. Right. Um, kind of give everybody a little bit of a little bit of background. Um, kind of what your idea and vision was, you know, creating low style and then South Life and then Hanger Hangover and what you're trying to do for the car culture period, but more so for the Jackson metro area. Yeah, I had, I had just been in the car scene. I, like I said, I started around 2015, getting back into the scene and meeting some people and doing that thing. So it's it's been six years now since I've been doing that. And a lot of my friends at the time and throughout the years have always said the same things and complained about the same things with the car culture here. They'd say, car culture here sucks. That's what they'd say. There's nothing to do. There's not that many cool cars. Uh, nobody does what they do on the West Coast or, or in big cities like Dallas and Houston and you know, they're in Chicago. They just compared all these things to hear and they were like we wish we had that and so um, three years ago I, I opened up low style expo and that was because I wanted a car show just for lowered cars right and um, 
and so that kind of got me started and once I had a little taste of how much fun that was it led me to go on to do other things so I started playing Hanger Hangover and South Life. Um, Hanger Hangover was a show I've always wanted to do where it was at an airfield inside of a hangar and I could just see cars and airplanes together spilling out right. and the planes flying and people pulling in and things like that and uh, lo and behold I was able to meet up with a local um, group here called the Commemorative Air Force. They're kind of a, they, they help instill, you know, the memory and the history of, you know, older World War I, World War II, uh, military airplanes and history and, and pilots and things like that. But they're also kind of trying to preserve that culture. And I was right. like, that plays right into what I'm trying to do with the car culture. And uh, South Life was supposed to be a show for everybody. It was supposed to be a show that anybody and everybody could come to and enjoy the good things about Mississippi, which is the relaxed atmosphere, you kick back on your front porch, you're drinking some iced tea, you're hanging out with your buddies, drinking a beer, whatever, but it was supposed to be that. It was supposed to be this kind of just open, um, hanging The show out. for the people. Yeah, the show for the people, and, and that was kind of... I based that off of what Minty Culture is, which was supposed to be a brand for the people. Right. It's, it's not taking away as much as it's giving back. And so once I had those shows in place and I found myself in them, it's just kind of been growing ever since. The support's been growing. Um, the people that support me and then meeting guys like you and um, Heather and just different people that are, you know, have that same mindset of it's not just about a money-making machine anymore. It's not really even about the entertainment side as much as it is about continuously creating and growing that community and offering something that we complain about we don't have or we complain right. about that's not that great. So all three shows are very different. All three shows are for different kinds of people. All three shows have their own little thing. They're not the same thing. And the people that really are looking for that, when they come to it, they're like, this is great because this is so different. This is, you know, not everybody has a, a car show at a baseball park. You right. Know? And then last year when we opened it up, that I think that just really changed it. Not everybody's having a, a car show at a hangar with old World War II planes flying around and giving, right. giving rides and the pilots are out there and they can tell you all about the plane and the history of it. And, this plane was in World War II, and this plane was in, flew to Vietnam, and the pipe this one time did this, and then you got Low Style, which is always around Halloween, that just gives you that fall feeling, and it's kind of like the Fast and Furious scene where they're in the backyard hanging out, eating chicken, right. and drinking beer. That's just kind of what it is, <laughs> and I love that about all those shows, and that's that's kind of where I come from, you know, what I want to do as a show promoter. So now I get to say what we want to do and how we kind of have that similar vision of changing culture, growing the community, and just offering something fun and different for everybody. Yeah. Well, that was one of the biggest things, man. Like, I grew up on the coast, one of the biggest shows around the southeast, you know, with Scraping the Coast, you know, Greg Miller and his guys do a jam-up job every year. And then, you know, I moved to a little town in Laurel, and there really wasn't a scene there, you know. Yeah. You had already left by that time. And, you know, Heather and I got married, and I was always just kind of like that oddball guy. You know, I'd pull up somewhere, lay my truck out, and people looked at me like I was crazy. Yeah. And then I moved up here and met some cool people, man, started going to car Cars and Coffee, and that's kind of how we really, you know, got to meet each other. And I was like, man, you know, this guy really has it together as far as, you know, I know that when I talk to him about something, he's driven by more than just a profit. Mm -hmm. The guy is driven by something that matters. And I've always been that type of person. You know, it's um, the, the thing that makes me tick is not about revenue and all that other kind of stuff. It's how can I give back? I mean, you know me as the motivator. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things. It's about motivating people and inspiring people to be better and to be different and to keep moving forward even in the wake of adversity and yeah. stuff. So I kind of got to looking at it, man. I'm like, you know, this guy is already going in a certain direction. 
and he's got a following and people from the car, the import scene. I know tons of people from the tr- you know from the truck side of things. I'm like, could we merge it? You know, the first meeting that we had, we, we sat at CC's Coffee House for seven and a half hours. Yeah. Literally, like, my wife called me while we were there. She's like, you know, are y'all okay? And, <laughs> you know, we kind of laughed about it and stuff, but, man, it's like we just kind of jived because, you know, it was it was deeper than just a, a surface-level right. interaction, you know what I mean? So, along those same lines, what do you see as the innovative turn or the switch of kind of the ways of old, and I'll say that with shows and stuff like that, what is it going to be that it takes for shows to go into the 2021 and beyond? I know that's a loaded that's question. A, that's a but super loaded question. Uh, obviously, this was, we didn't talk about this at all. So I, I think it's going to take people... You know, there's there's good parts of the tradition in the car world, and then and then there's not so good parts. And and the big term or the big the big word that everyone uses, toxic. You know, that's mm. that's the buzzword now. And, and how many people? But is it somewhat it? true? It is. There there's there's a lot of truth to it. Um, but you know, there's to me because I've been on both sides of it. I've 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 been in places because I'm extremely passionate about this. It's not just you know, this isn't just something that I, you know, that I enjoy and and it's a hobby. But it's something that I'm extremely passionate about because I do. I love the car scene and the car community, and it has helped me way more than it's hurt me. But I have had those times where it's hurt. I've I've seen times where I've become this guy that everybody was like, oh, watch his videos, check him out. This is cool. Hey, will you film my car? Blah blah blah. To months later. Not even a year later, but just a few months later, where people, the, you know, the fangs come out and they just attack you, like your videos suck and and you don't know anything about cars and you're not a real car guy and all this kind of stuff. And uh, so it is. There's 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 both sides of that. There's good and evil with just about everything. Right. And um, and it can it can hurt your feelings if you're a feelings person. Um, it can definitely hurt your pride if you're prideful. But it, it's it's I think moving forward, what helps us transition is thinking outside the box and being innovative. And Absolutely. 2020 taught us, us a lot about that because we were and people were having. I mean, you know, I I talked to I talked to guys and women and, who are in the car scene that are much older than I am. You know, who barely know how to use a cell phone nowadays because it's a computer in your pocket much less know how to get on a Zoom call or a Google right. page or something like that. And that's how the world was functioning. And I think people now see that was an actual helpful tool that they had never used. And I think you have for a lot of people that will continue to use that. Um, so I just think that going forward, we, we're not going to be able to keep doing the same things that we've always done. I don't think that, I don't think the, um, park pay 20 bucks and and walk around and look at cars is enough anymore right i think that um people you and i've talked about this people enjoy an experience that's right they love an experience and so we all have to figure out ways to incorporate technology and now we're talking about health and safety in events it's something that you know we faced last year right and it is. It's stuff that's kind of on the topic of everyone's mind. Is you used to you could host a car show and you didn't have to worry about if there were masks and hand sanitizer right. and signs and all this kind of stuff. Well, now you have to worry about that. And even even if we blow past COVID and that's not you know it's just another flu or whatever, I still think that there's going to be an aspect of people are still going to focus on that a little bit more than they used to. Right. And so. When it comes down to experience, I think that technology is going to play a huge part in it. Absolutely. Which is, and we've seen this too, how you how you register for the show. That's right. Um, what's being offered? What you know? How do you expose it online and to who and where? Um, so it, it is. It's still about the cars, but I mean, you know, nowadays the world, thanks to technology and cell phones and things like that, the world has shrank. 
Right. You know, so it's it's nothing. There, there's nothing that's limitless. There's no right. way to not reach me. Right. And even down to like building your car and the builds that we have and, and who builds what. I mean, you know, just about any builder in the world is just, just a, a, a DM or a PM away from, you know, a direct message or a private message away from, hey, will you build my car? Right. You know, it, it used to, it was not that way. It used to, it was like, I don't know how to get in touch with Chip Foose, you know. Now I go on his Twitter and send him a private message and be like, you know, right. I've got $2 million, will you build me a car kind of right. deal. And of course I don't, but there are people out there now that have access to that. That's right. You know, so I think that's it, is, is being able to increase the experience beyond just the physical over into the digital. and. It takes a to me. It takes a lot more work because we're looking and seeing that videos and audio and pictures and how it's being translated across a digital device to people results in a better physical show. So I think to me that's that's going to be the biggest change. Is that um, also electric? It's just huge. You know, it's, it seems like it's 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 been like a slow trickle, and then now all of a sudden it's like everyone's doing electric. Right, with EVs, and you know, yeah. you got Chevy has the Volt, and then Ford has all the, the Flex or whatever it yeah. is, and then you know, then you have, um, I mean, all the way to Tesla and stuff like that. So, yeah. how do you think that those changes and stuff are going to affect? You know these guys who are like, oh, I'm only going to have a short block Chevy and everything. I, you know, yeah. or a small block Chevy and everything. Well, I think you're going to have some people that are always diehard of anything. So they're always a die. I mean, I was an anti-electric anything for the longest time, and I've even noticed being more impressed with what electric horsepower and, and torque does versus gas power. Right. Um, I was talking to a good friend of mine, my buddy Zach. Um, he and I were looking at a guy doing a build. He's doing a, because he's a truck guy, and so he's looking at an F100 on a Crown Vic chassis with a Tesla swap. Oh wow! And uh, when we went to SEMA two years ago, um, you know, GM had a really really impressive build that was all electric, um, and it was an old school truck. C10 truck, but it was all electric front right. and back. And I do. I just think I, I've told people that I said, you know, we're we're in the day where people are modern cars are looking more at how to be efficient, how to give everybody kind of what they want. Everybody's trying to please everybody. So electricity is a thing that we already have at our homes, and it was just makes it so much easier to come home and plug your car in than it is to, you know, drive down the street to the gas station. Um, you're getting a lot of power and torque. Um, you're even seeing like, you know, exotic cars and hyper cars and high performance cars. They're putting small little electric motors at all four wheels so that they can get that instant torque to catch up to the gas powered vehicle and things like right. that. I mean, I just think that there, it's going to come to a time where that hybrid technology, more and more people are going to see it's impressive for, and, and they're going to respect it more and it's going to earn everyone's respect. And you're gonna have some diehard guys that goes, nothing beats the, you know, a four barrel carburetor and, and, and the sound and the, of a V8 in the morning. You know, right. they're just gonna be those guys. And I love it too. You know, I tell people all the time I'm weird because I can smell exhaust and think it's just one of the best smells in the world. <laughs> but you, but I think this uh, younger generation, um, my generation and younger, they're they're impressed with power. They're impressed with. You know, we're we're living in an age where cars are making six, seven, eight, nine hundred horsepower from the factory, right. and you know, used to a four, a three or four hundred horsepower car was a fast car. Now a six hundred to an eight hundred horsepower car is a fast car. Right. And I just and, and I just think that people are looking at cars like a Tesla. That's a nice, cool, comfortable car. They can jump in. They don't have to do a lot of modifications to it. It's already pretty fast. They can put wheels and air suspension on, and they've got a cool show car yeah. that's still fast. That's right. And and that right out the gate. Right out the gate. And I I just think that that is where we're going. And I think people are going to have to adapt to that. They're going to have to learn to 
there is a respectable technology in that and um, that's kind of I think the scene is going to go more and more to that hybrid all electric platform I think you'll always have classic cars that are respected that's right and we'll never get away from the fact of wrenching on a car and not plugging in a computer and doing that but you know tuning become a thing and plugging in that computer and that guy that's just a wizard being able to get 16 horsepower out of a stock engine just by plugging in a computer was cool now the guy that can get 1600 horsepower out of an electric engine is going to be cool and so i think that those two things it's just there's a lot of change and innovation and a lot of things that are added to it but i i think for the community the way that it continues to grow is to stand together and we're That's right. we're still really really divided um in america we see that we're divided but also you know in the car scene we're still really divided right and um, being somebody that enjoys lots of types of cars it's really really hard you know to want to build one thing and then want to build something else and be in two different completely different you know groups of people and be like we all share a common interest right and um and i i think though that that is really for the car scene for the builders um the guys that are modding their cars and for the culture all of that that's really that's really where the future has to go to survive is that we've got to all learn to kind of enjoy each other's presence not necessarily i'm not one of those i'm not one of those guys that's like respect all builds right but i i do think that you have to enjoy the community for what it is and enjoy hanging out laughing enjoy that you all share a similar passion learning about new things learning about stuff that you're not familiar with sharing your knowledge with somebody else and and you know it's never a perfect world but it can be harmonious right. and we can we can agree and disagree and still be friends and uh that's what i really i that's what i want to see and i hope that somehow i can contribute to that well i mean that that brings up another good point so mutual respect even if i don't really care for what you're doing i can keep it to myself so i know another thing and i'll just go ahead and you know kind of put this out there too so you're involved in uh, one of the associations here in mississippi too aren't you yeah so you're a you're a tuner guy i'm a truck guy we have classic car guys we have muscle car guys we have all these different things so kind of give me a little bit of an idea about you being in that role and what you're expecting and how you're seeing that take place yeah um it's really funny i i've been mostly an import guy most of my life um I've had I had a little bit of influence from my dad, but um, and I, I give him a lot of credit because when me and my brother started doing tuner cars, um, you know he's a muscle car guy. He could have easily said, you know those cars are just rice burners or whatever. But he he enjoyed us enjoying the car scene. Right. And I think that gave me a lot of um, that gave me gave me a lot of respect i guess now for multiple people and what they do but it also instilled in me something that um i'm now kind of sharing and seeing it's it's a lot more fun um a year ago i got asked to be on the board to be an honorary board member um, for the mississippi classic cruisers i didn't have a classic car um, the oldest car i had was from the 90s most of these guys have cars from the 40s up to the 70s and that's kind of where it ends um the most of the the men and women that are in the club were you know 20 or 30 years older than i was and so i was i was very honored that they that they came to me and asked me to be a part of that i was even more kind of shocked that about a month after being on the board they asked if i would be their vice president for 2020 and the way the club works is whoever's nominated as the vice president the next year automatically becomes the president so uh, going into this year, I am now the, the I'm now the president of the Mississippi Classic Cruisers. Uh, still don't have a classic car. Yeah. Um, and uh, still an import guy, but I also work at a classic collector car dealership that is mostly older vehicles. Right. And I've enjoyed all aspects of. So it. basically, they're kind of looking at you and they're saying, well. This guy isn't a young whippersnapper that doesn't know anything about, you know, what's going on, but 
they that word we were talking about they respect you even though that's not your cup of tea per se you can still look at it and say because it's a car and because of what it is in the community you know i can move past maybe my feelings of my style and stuff like that and i think they see that in you as well you know yeah uh, i think the the best part about it is is like i was talking about earlier this divide you know i think a lot of younger guys don't think they can relate with older guys and, and vice versa and there's this huge divide in this club was very different in that mentality and and kind of the way they look at it is they're like well you're a car guy and we want you with us and i i have met some amazing people they've all been extremely courteous and they do they give me a lot of respect which is something you is almost unheard of, of of an older generation giving a younger generation respect for anything um you know this morning i had i had breakfast with um, five guys that probably know more about cars and, and have, have seen more in their lifetime than I'll ever see with mine, but they invited me to their table to sit and they listened to me. They asked me questions. Right. They asked my opinion on things. And, and that, to me, is very something that's lost. And these guys in this club had enough uh, know-how and they weren't prideful en enough to not ask someone like me to help continue the legacy that they have because we're out for the same goal That's we right. have different interest in cars it's changed but they understand that's where the world's going and that's where the community's going and that's where the scene is going so they're like we want you to come on board and be part of that and well and technically time is timeless mm -hmm. i know that sounds crazy but I, you know my truck this year is 10 years old so in 15 years that nice new shiny looking stuff with the big wheels it's going to be a classic right so you know in 75 a 50 is a classic but in 2000 the 75 was a classic so it just keeps on going yeah you know yeah and so um with that i have i've, I've engaged a lot more with older cars um, classic cars and it's really cool recently i got to really work hands-on and drive some cars that are you know hundreds of years old and they were the beginning of cars right you know um, being able to ride and drive in cars from 1900 or 1909 and and you know you're, you're looking at this and there's no shifter and there's no clutch you've got these dials on, on the on the uh, steering wheel that advance the timing and give you a little more here and there and it's it, you know some of them don't even have a steering wheel they've got a stick that's like a tiller on a boat you know that's how cars started right and now here we are driving cars that practically drive themselves now and from henry ford's first thing i don't care what color it is you can have it as long as it's black yeah you know to now we have wraps and we have all of these iridescent paint jobs and i mean just look at the evolution yeah. of the car itself man. yeah and i love all of that i find i find i mean i just find a fascination with it and and that's the thing is like there's so many people that are missing out on that same with the truck scene is is you know i've never been into it i think i've always thought that bag trucks and loader trucks mini trucks all that stuff was cool but i've never i've never been in or around any of it until i really met you and um now i love it and um same with lifted trucks I, you know i've always had an appreciation for a good build or something that looked good lifted or whatever but now i've gotten into that more thanks to you know my friend zach and so that is it's just like a little bit of open-mindedness will lead you down a path that you didn't know that you really enjoy but once you get there you're like oh that's cool and and i too i laugh a lot of times because i'll see something from the tuner world come over to the truck scene right or something from you know classic muscle car world comes over to the tuner world and i'm like man they were doing that back in the 60s and everybody's like this is the new thing and right. i'm like man that was happening a long time ago i know man like in the 30s and 40s you know we hear about body drops and things being chopped and channeled yeah. and all i mean they've been doing that forever yeah. it was just called something or it looked a different way or whatever you know and then i i almost kind of and hindered from saying the word evolution you know what i mean but it is it's kind of it's that thought process of it just getting better and better and never ending and you know we we all see this this clash sometimes you know of 
I know speaking personal experience, you know, my truck is bagged, it's not body dropped, and people have static trucks, and they're like, oh, you know, so you got like the static group over here, and then you're better if you're bagged, yeah. and then you're better if you're body dropped, <laughs> and they're like, you know, you can't be on 20 inch wheels anymore, they got to be 28s or better, and they got to be billets, you know, yeah. and all these kind of things, and it's like, you know, we just kind of have to get to a point inside of that community to where it's like let's not forget you know where we all started you know i sat in my dad's garage and hammered my first truck you know with a with a grinder cutting the springs and putting blocks on it and stuff yeah. man and so the evolution as individuals we get better and then we expect more and more and more but it should be we expect more and more and more from ourselves that's right not that guy has to have what I have or he can't be. Right. You know what I mean? Because when we all stop and look at it, man, and we back up, I mean, it all started with horses. Yeah. And then buggies. Yeah. And then it went into, you know, and then, so here we are, you know, uh, hundreds of years later, just like you said, man. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I tell, um, I, at work, we have one of these little things on this plate. It's a little capacitor. And it was, it was the original kind of the battery alternator generators like the first one ever a lot of people call it generator whatever and uh, it's a wood box and when you open it up there's just a few little little you know wires that go here and there that's how that's how it got spark right and now here we are with you know, I tell people all the time it's like that would be so cool to have that in like a Tesla museum where you've got that and then you've got the car and it's like this is where you came from. This right. is your genesis. Right. And uh, I, you know, the same thing is we have a we have a car called an RCH, which is a um, it's an old. It just looks like a almost like a wagon, and it's got a little one cylinder engine in the front. But it's um it was the beginning of GM. And I tell my boss all the time, it's like it'd be so cool if we had this and a C8 Corvette sitting side by side because it's like the beginning and the, and where we are now. Right. And it's like. That it's just cool to see this is where you started and now we have this you right. know and um, it's the same with the rest of the culture man it's like it, it is it's like I remember when I was growing up you know lowering your car meant lowering springs and good shocks then all of a sudden the trend became coilovers and and if you didn't run coilovers and you ran bags on your car well bags were not as good as coilovers because the performance was worse or whatever well now everybody they put bags on everything. It's everything. Bag everything because it's cool to lay out. That's right. Yeah. Like like LS swaps. LS swap everything. Yeah. You know. What I mean? And the and the and really and truly the import scene has really just now started accepting bags more. It's become the stance that stance movement and that stance look. Well, you guys have been doing bags forever. Right. And that's the thing. It's like you got to share a common interest if you just would not be so egotistical and just kind right. of mesh and learn well, to I mean, hang now, out. Now even in our in our culture more you see the splatter paints and the, right. you know, all of that kind of stuff and you see people sticker bombing full size trucks yeah. and I'm like yeah, yeah, who would have thought? You I know, know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so neon, that's the thing that you know, used to, they were always like, oh that's cheap don't go down that aisle at, at you know, auto, auto zone. zone and now it's like, everybody's like Neon the world. Yeah. You got neon inside of wheels and everything. Under glow else. and then yeah, you know, wheel circles and now now you know they actually have best underglow trophies and stuff at shows, yeah. man. Yeah. I mean and I remember I remember being sixteen years old with my first blazer. I went to uh, O'Reilly's and got the little, they called them thunder sticks. Yeah. They were about this long and man I hooked them up to my amplifier so when the when the bass hit the lights would glow and that was the coolest thing right. ever man and then now you can get them to where they do all kind of crazy stuff yeah man. you can you can program them and everything oh, yeah yeah so <coughs> going forward even to that evolution e even more so man I'm, I'm not gonna let you get out of here without doting a little bit you know what i mean so um <laughs> let's go ahead and uh share a couple of the upcoming things that we have and I know we don't have a lot of exacts for certain dates yeah. and stuff, but um, let's go ahead and put that out there a little bit. Sure. You know, we have Hangar Hangover coming up. June 19th. That's right. Father's Day weekend. It's in Madison, Mississippi at the Madison 
Air Center. I found that out there. They kept calling it the Madison Airport, but it's actually the Madison Air Center. Is right. what it's called. Uh, it's a great show. It's it's um, not a huge huge show, but it's it's kind of a boutique premiere type kind of show. We'll have a few different ticket options once you get all the details. Um, but you can actually park in the hangar and park next to the hangar, and um, they're giving. They told us today that they're going to be doing uh, airplane rides. You can ride in old World War II airplanes, and it's like basically like a hundred bucks. Yeah. And they'll ride you around for 15 or 20 minutes, and they'll do barrel rolls and all that kind of stuff. You can relive your pretty much, days. Pretty much whatever your stomach will handle. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll have food and ice cream and all kinds of great stuff like that. And, um, and that show is actually benefiting the commemorative airport. Yeah, yeah. It helps, it helps us kind of get back to them a little bit in a way. Um, then we have South Life, which right. will be uh, at Trustmark Park. Trustmark Park, it's uh, home of Mississippi Braves. And uh, tentatively, that date is going to be the end of July, so just circle the end of July and write South Life and don't do anything else. That's right. Um, unless we have some kind of crazy, you know, pandemic that closes everything down, which I don't think we will. I think everything's going to be good by the summer for sure. Um, Low Style Expo is always around Halloween, yep. and uh, that's just a super good come hang out, relax, chill around the bonfire. Um, you know, eat a weenie and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. drink some beer. That's right. Um, and then, of course, uh, go check out Minty Culture. It, it, all you got to do is put that in Google and everything pops up. You put that in Instagram, it pops up. You put it in Facebook, just type in Minty Culture and it pops up. So it's populated real well. Um, and I'm excited. I'm excited yeah, for man. all of that stuff this year. And so we got a lot of things in the works, man. A lot of tricks up our sleeve. Yeah, can't take everything. That's right. Can't let the cat out of the bag yet, man. But um, go give Roddy a like and a follow on all of the social medias. Um, and just keep your heads up, guys. Cool things coming. Look out for the next episode of In the Garage. Thanks, Roddy. Thanks, Jake.